And I think my daughter agreed that that is a more humane way of looking at things than subjecting to people to experimental drugs and surgeries that have nasty complications. And if you read about the complications, some of them are extremely nasty. Uh, that learning how to be happy, no matter what, is probably the best way and is, is an essential life skill. And if you've developed that skill, you are going to be a lot better off than somebody who submits his life to some medical complex that's going to sell him drugs and sell him drugs and sell him drugs for the entire rest of his life. Ladies and gentlemen, boys. <clears throat> Let's try that one more time. Take Ladies care. and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Ari and Big Mike are proud to present the greatest podcast in the world. No snowflakes allowed and summer is coming. Oh, I still get to make jokes about your intros now, don't I? No, you don't. This is the podcast that was started by Two Guys on Cigar Night. So, Mike, what do we got today? Well, we got a, big, we got a good one today. But first, before we get started, I just want to remind everybody to like and subscribe now because, you know, this way, this way they can get more of these awesome videos. So, I've got a great one today. I want to talk about these two lovely ladies. One of them is Paula Scanlon. The other one is Riley Gaines, right? The work that they're doing, you know, to protect women's sports is immense. You know, I played football. I would not want to play with against a girl. I am physically six foot nine, 400 plus pounds. My playing weight when I was in college was 380. And at my best, you know, the amount of weight that I could lift would be more than women's world records. They weren't the most impressive of all the guys, but they would still beat women's records, you know? There is a physiological difference between men and women, right? The amount of strength that we have versus what they have. You know, I'm not the physical specimen you are, but I am, I mean, there are women in the world who are stronger than I am, but there aren't that many women who can do 25 pull-ups from the dead hanging as a 50 year old i can do that still i so, can never do that okay well <laughs> but the, the the point being i am not stronger than the strongest woman in the world but i'm stronger than pretty much every woman i've ever met right for and for the most part i go you know the same thing i don't think i've met many physically stronger women i, I now, doubt emotionally they're... and mentally on the other hand i've met some women who have blown me the way blown me away like they are Wow. But, but we still have to, f to, to affirm the fundamental truth that Will Thomas is a man. Yes. And he is, there is no way for a human being to transform from male to female or female to male. There's no way that can oh, happen. Oh, I'm going to take even a step further. I'm going to bring up Paula Scanlon for you. That's why we're talking about this lovely lady. This woman was a lifelong swimmer. From the time she could barely crawl, she was swimming. She gave up everything to be a competitive swimmer. That was her goal, to swim competitively in college. And she did pretty good for herself. She won a few championships. And then she was forced to have Will Thomas on her team. Now, she is a victim of sexual assault. She was forced to change in front of him 18 times a week. Now, she says by her own rote that women would go into the bathroom, they would like hide behind lockers, they would go into the showers, whatever they could to not change in front of him. But as a victim of sexual assault, she's got to get triggered. She's got to get, like, like, all this. And she's forced to do it. And when she talked to the university, she goes to UPenn and says, Hey, guys, this isn't right. Like, we're not okay with this. The entire swim team is not okay with this. They were told to shut up and sit down. And they said even further, this was a non-negotiable. And if you need it, we'll provide you counseling for re-education. The left ever since the French Revolution has been about using the political process to make radical transformations to society. People look at society as it is and they are dissatisfied with it. They just want to change everything. And that's what the left has been since the very beginning. And trans is the perfect issue for this. And I'm going to tell you why. Because instead of making one little change about 
somebody who's dissatisfied with their life in some way is going to make some improvement. They're going to get in shape. They're going to uh, uh, study a subject. They're going to get a skill. They're going to do any of these things that makes their life better. And that's what the, uh, the, the traditional way of improving your life. Well, trans says, we're going to give you this surgery and these drugs to, to uh, radically transform your body. Plus, we're going to make it so that everybody else in the world is going to say that this transformation is legitimate. A he is now a she. So it requires you to agree that trans women are women. It's the perfect, perfect ruse to get people to agree to things that are obviously not true. So if that's the case, where are all the trans men in, or I don't know, women becoming men in the men's sports world? Why, are, why isn't it like that? I'll, I'll tell you why. There's a video once I saw, I think it was the Olympic gold medalist, Sean Johnson. And she was a gold medalist in uh, women's gymnastics. And she was watching male gymnastics attempting female gymnastics skills. And the skills came so absurdly easily to these male gymnastics, uh, gymnasts, that she was almost disgusted by how hard these things were for her. So where are the uh, quote unquote trans men in men's sports? Answer is they're nowhere. They can never be anywhere, not even in a sport that emphasizes uh, 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 that uh, emphasizes grace like, uh, like, like gymnastics. Two males, Tessa Johnson and Evan, Evelyn Williamson, on a, hold on, I gotta put my glasses on, I'm getting older here. Unashamedly masculine and standing proudly in first and second place on the women's single speed category at the Illinois State Cyclocross Championships on Sunday. The only female on the podium, you know, won bronze. Um, 2021, footage of a trans MMA fighter, Alana McLaughlin, holding Celine Provost in a chokehold. Provost's blood is smeared on the floor, shocked the world. Provost had no shot in that fight, by the way. I just want to put that out there. 2022, 18-year-old Peyton McNabb suffered debilitating head and neck injuries after a trans student hit her in the face during a volleyball game in North Carolina. Like, this child is still, you know, dealing with the, with the after effects of that. I mean, they suffered impaired vision, partial paralysis, all sorts of things like that. Like, really? But wait a second. The trans activists will just tell you sports has risks. Look how many football players have been badly injured and have uh, post-concussion syndrome and stuff like that. Sports has risks. And these girls competing in sports. Okay, but, but see, now I played football. Right? Guess what? I'm a giant of a man. I get it. I, I see that everywhere I walk. But guess what? When I played the line, I played against other giants. I what there, there you know there wasn't little Timmy over here who weighs 115 pounds. There wasn't me. Exactly. <laughs> like you would have gotten rocked in a football game, <laughs> right? So the big guys are fighting other big guys. The smaller guys are going against smaller guys, like wide receivers and D backs, right? You know they're fast and they're strong and they're swift, but they're also like half our weight, right? I'm a lineman, right? We're we're supposed to be big, right? This was supposed to be strong. Nate Newton in like the mid 90s. They were talking about how strong NFL linemen were. This man goes down to the bench, takes 700 pounds to his chest, pause, and then pushes it up. Name me a woman who can do that. Any woman, anywhere. And Nate's not the only guy who did stuff like that. But you know something? They'll, just, they'll tell you it's because of the way girls are socialized, isn't it? It's because girls are taught to play with dolls. And if we ta teach them to play with trucks... Ten years from now, we're going to have women doing ten reps with 700 pounds. Trust me on this one. Trust me. Mm, I don't know. I, I, I just went to a women's powerlifting meet recently. You know, my wife is, you know, started doing powerlifting. Now, I'm not going to disparage my wife. My wife, I love my wife, but she's five foot two. She's a small lady, you know, and a lot of the other women there are, you know, were, I think the tallest one I saw was maybe five eight who was competing. And for the most part, any weight that I saw, deadlift, squats, or, you know, or uh, deadlift, squats, or benching, 
I, I, I saw weights that at some point in my life I curled. Like I simply took it and just curled it up with just my biceps. That's the weights they were doing. And they were struggling with something fierce. And it was beautiful. They worked hard. And they should be celebrated for what they do. I say I'm a woman. I can now go into that women's powerlifting lift and like just break everybody without having trying. Like, how is that fair? How is that right? How th th We had a whole Title IX that said that women's sports were meant something because of all these reasons. And we listed them from the emotional to the mental to the physical to societal to this to that. We did it and we said we're proud of Title IX. And now you get a woman like Summer Lee who's like, I don't even know how to say this. I, like She's just whacked out in the head. She really is. Oh, God, where, where, where's Summer Lee's thing here? Because I really want to make sure I get it. Ah. She's like, she, you know, they had a thing on uh, Riley Gaines and women in, in sports and blah, blah, blah. So she goes up. She starts out when she, uh, at the committee, were likely to be forced to listen to transphobic bigotry. She wore non nonchalantly as if her one-sided opinion was indisputable truth. That's ridiculous. That, that's that's insane. Guyly, not Guyly, Riley Gaines goes on. She's like, I'm appalled. How dare a sitting member of Congress trash as hateful bigots those who have come to speak about their own experiences and stand up for women's rights despite the grave risk of death threats and physical violence. And so when she was allowed to talk, she responded, if I was transphobic, then Lee's opening monologue defending the right of male-born individuals to compete in and take women's sports titles made her a misogynist. And it was a quip quip in self-defense, but it's also painfully true. And then what happened? Lee and the rest of the Democrats, they go crazy. They go into this tailspin. And she just like stopped the hearing and demanded that Riley Gaines' stuff was taken off. Like, what you just said, I want it stricken from the record. And thankfully, thank God, her request was unsuccessful. Cong congressional records will still show that that woman was a misogynist. You see, politicians are the most skillful people in the world in using words, in using language to make people agree with really ridiculous things. Why should Will Thomas compete against women in swimming? And they'll say, but you want there to be women's sports, don't you? Sure, sure I do. And all women should have access to women's sports. All women should be able to compete, shouldn't they? Sure, sure they should. Why shouldn't Will Thomas be able to compete? He's a woman. He self-identifies as a woman. And once that happens, once they say that, they've set a trap for you. All of a sudden, you start arguing with them over what is a woman. And they have come up with all sorts of ways of saying a woman is anyone who identifies as a woman, which is completely circular. They have come up with all sorts of ways to, uh, uh, to, to, to say that trans women are women. And once you agree with that proposition, then, then men competing in boxing, competing in MMA, competing in wrestling, competing in judo against women is completely acceptable because trans women are women. One of the tricks that they use is surprisingly benign. It's a term that is now gaining currency in medical circles, pregnant people. Now, when someone says a pregnant man, it's obviously ridiculous because no man in history has ever been pregnant. But the term pregnant people isn't necessarily ridiculous in the sense that women are people and women get pregnant. But since women are the only people who get pregnant, pregnant women is the more appropriate and precise term. But when they say pregnant people, they're making you say something that's not on its face ridiculous, but once you say it, you've bought into their mindset. You are one step closer to affirming these ridiculous notions that a man can be a woman, that a man can get pregnant, that, uh, that menstrual products should be in men's rooms, and any of these other nonsensical bullcrap that they're trying to push.
John McEnroe, at one point in his life, was the number one player in the world for over three years. You know, there was not a better... He's considered one of the greatest tennis players of all time, right? So now, he gets into an interview with Gail King, and they're talking about Serena Williams. And he keeps saying that Serena Williams is the greatest female tennis player ever. I mean, this is a guy who watched Mar- Martina Navratilova. Mar- I can't even... Martina, Martina Navratilova. Yes, I can't even say her name. Steffi Graf, you know, like all these great women, right? He watched them all. He's seen them all play. And he's like, yeah, Serena's the best out of them all. And so Gail says, why do you keep saying a female tennis player? He's like, because that's what she is. She's a female tennis player. She's the greatest female tennis player of all time. She's like, well, what if she played with the men? He's like, "Eh, she'd probably be about 700. That's where her ranking would be. Well, the greatest female runner, a sprinter of all time, was Florence Griffith Joyner. Her world record in the 100 meters is 10.49. It was a perfectly executed race. And if you are a man who can run a 10-4-9, you would be a very good high school runner. You might even win. You might even come in second or third in a, in a state championship with a 10-4-9. That's the women's world record. Because the men's world record, I think it was at 9-5-8, Usain Bolt in 2009. So Gail goes with John, with John McEnroe, right? They're arguing. And she gets floored. And he's taking a lot of heat in the media because of this. You know? I just don't understand. Why is it that she can't admit that there's physical differences? Why can't she admit that it's also a different type of game? The men's game is more of power, where the women's game is more finesse, you know, which is one of the reasons what made Serena, you know, so amazing is that she had the strongest female serve. But her female serve still is an adequate serve in the men's court. It's not a great, it's not even a good serve. It's adequate. The reason they can't admit it is that leftism is about using the political process to make radical transformations to the world. And they will admit no limitations to their ability to change the world. For example, there was a man who was a Russian agronomist, a Russian plant scientist. His name was Trofim Lysenko. And he was the official scientist of the Soviet Union, practically. He was, Joseph Stalin was his, his biggest, uh, his biggest fan. And the reason Joseph Stalin was a big fan of his is because he said he could use special processes to make plants into anything you want them to be. You want to, uh, to increase uh, wheat yields by planting uh, wheat seeds really, really, really close to each other. You can definitely do that. You know why? Because Wheat seeds are the proletariat. They're working class wheat seeds. And just like the working class will never fight amongst themselves, the wheat seeds will never fight against each other either. And not only that. That's not true. Who says anything about true? Not only that, but I can make orange trees grow in Siberia. No, he couldn't. But when the Soviets used his techniques... They had famine after famine after famine, and it didn't matter. If you went against Trofim Lysenko, you were going to be canceled. And in the Soviet Union, the left had their way completely, and cancellation meant getting shot in Lubyanka. So, since the very beginning, leftism is about, as I said, using the political process to making radical transformations. And it doesn't matter if... Serena Williams is the greatest female player of all time, and she loses to the 250th ranked uh, uh, man in tennis. It doesn't matter because the women of tomorrow will be radically transformed by the political process, and we're going to make Serena Williams 3.6 or whatever, and she's going to go out and dominate in uh, men's tennis. In fact, there won't have to be men's tennis or women's tennis. It'll just be tennis because humanity is going to be radically transformed by what we do where are the feminists the ones who pushed so hard for the wnba because women were different and women earned this and women deserved the right for their own basketball league where are those same women today i'll tell you exactly where they are feminism has always been a radical movement 
dedicated to using the political process to making radical transformations to society. And while there are women who are called TERFs, trans-exclusionary radical feminists, by the, uh, by the trans activists, they, it, it doesn't change the fact that feminism has been, since the very beginning, a movement dedicated to making radical transformations in society. And you can't make a more radical transformation in society than saying that sex differences are completely irrelevant, we can change sex at will, and it, none of it really matters. This is an issue that's being promoted with a profound amount of manipulation and using words as games. For example, one of the uh, biggest slogans you hear is protect trans kids, because that's, that's one of the reasons why we're, we're having uh, a boys and girls sports, is because we need to protect trans kids. But assuming there could be such a thing as a trans kid, what would it mean to protect a trans kid? Well, I think the first question we should ask is, what does it mean to protect a kid? I've got four kids of my own. Uh, we need uh, police protection. We need a, f a fire brigade. We need uh, to be protected from unreasonable searches and seizures, from having to quarter soldiers in our house. More importantly, we need to protect them from disease by uh, by having a sewage system, by having trash pickup, by having clean water delivered to our houses, by having electricity delivered to our houses and having our houses wired for electricity properly. All these things are forms of protection and all of them are very, very mundane. And not a single person in the world says, well, oh, that house shouldn't have clean water delivered to it because there's a trans kid living there. So, so nobody... Is, is, is saying that kids of any kind shouldn't be protected. So when they're saying things as manipulative as protect trans kids, they obviously mean something very, very different. What they mean is that we should protect their fragile egos by saying that, uh, uh, that their delusion that this boy is a girl is real or that this girl is a boy is real. That we should protect their delusion by saying, oh, you're really a girl, therefore you can go to wrestling and beat the tar out of a girl because you're a girl too, just like her. And that you should have uh, hormones and surgeries and puberty blockers and all these other things. That is not protection. But the skillful use of language has been used as a tool to make people agree with things that are not just ridiculous, but obviously ridiculous. Johns Hopkins University, famous medical center, university system, one that considered one of the premier in the world. 15 years ago, they came out with this whole idea that, you know, transgender is, it's bullshit. It's a psychological illness and that we need to deal with it. And they got blasted all over in medical journals and the political scheme and everybody because how dare you say what we're all thinking you know we know that the trans movement is like it's a dying movement you know in, in, in a lot of respects for for instance that you're 20 times more likely to become uh suicidal my daughter once came home after seeing a lecture by, uh, it was a very inappropriate lecture in which she was ta taught about these trans issues by somebody who really should not have done that. And she came in to me and spoke to me about it. And she told me what this person had said, and I gave her my opinion. And what I said is this, there are many things about the world that I'd like to change. For example, the thing I'd like to change the most is that people can oftentimes gain more by doing evil than they can by doing good. That's why there have been so many wars in the world. That's why there's criminality in the world. You see, there are many things about the world I want to change, but I can't do that. I can't make the world change the way I want it to be. So we as human beings have to learn how to deal with the things that we don't like about the world. And sometimes, there are some people who one of the things they don't like about the world is their biological sex. And those people should realize that that's just one of the things about the world that it would just be better if we change. But it can't be changed. 
And rather than trying to change it and pretending we've changed it, we should learn how to be happy and to have inspired and good lives in spite of all those things that bring us sadness, that make our lives worse, but cannot be changed. And I think my daughter agreed that that is a more humane way of looking at things than subjecting to people to experimental drugs and surgeries that have nasty complications. And if you read about the complications, some of them are extremely nasty. Uh, that learning how to be happy, no matter what, is probably the best way and is, is an essential life skill. And if you've developed that skill, you are going to be a lot better off than somebody who submits his life to some medical complex that's going to sell him drugs and sell him drugs and sell him drugs for the entire rest of his life. So I want to thank you all for listening. If you all still here, make sure you like and subscribe. You all have a great day, a great morning, afternoon, evening, whatever, and we'll see you for the next one. And if you want more humane insights from me, my Kingmaker series is available now. Uh, Consent is available on my YouTube channel as an audiobook. And the other two books, Due Process and Just Power, are available on Amazon. Thank you very much.